This is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV Hindu. A very good evening. You are watching Headlines now with me, Ashmit Kumar. And the one issue that has been making headlines, especially for school-going children and the parents, is the uniform school syllabus. Now, one issue that has all the parents and the students in a state of confusion. Now, today the expert panel was formed, and they have assured that at least uh, some questions will be answered by July 6th. But can we wait that long? To dwell on these few questions, I am now joined by uh, Mrs. Sheila Prakash, the principal of Joshua Matriculation School. Also joining me is Jayashree, a student herself of uh, Irwin Matriculation SHSS. And finally, Meera, the deputy city editor of The Hindu, will also be joining us and giving us uh, some perspective. A very good evening again. Let's take a look at the top stories. As confusion on fee structure reigns supreme, NDTV Hindu keeps you a step ahead. Get all the details at palikalvi.in. Newly appointed expert panel on common syllabus meets today. Veteran educationist YG Parthasarathy features in the panel. We've had the first committee meeting today and the committee will give its views after reviewing the entire textbooks which are given to them. And uh, since the matter is sub we don't want to say anything. Tamil Nadu government continues with the shuffle within state police forces. Our Shekhar is appointed as the new ADGP of the crime branch. India voted fourth most dangerous for women. Chennai fails to keep MRTS lines clear of danger for fairer sex. Fire ravages the slums in Thondiar Pet, burns down mark sheets and with it, the future of this young student. I have a certificate mark sheet. I have to help you. I Resettlement and rehabilitation of urban poor poses big questions. 40,000 in need of government aid and shelter. IIT Madras is a global village. Foreign faculty is wooed by handsome paychecks. I spent 40 days here. I really liked the environment. Also, I took it to professors. It seems they have a lot of freedom, academic freedom. And let's also take a look at stories coming in from across the nation. The BJP left slammed government over CAG report that the oil ministry and DG hydrocarbons allegedly favoured Reliance Industries. A setback to the salvage operations of MV Wisdom, the cable laid uh, to tow the ship snaps. Delhi police defends its action at the Ram Leela grounds in its affidavit, says there was no lati charge. I don't believe in fasts to protest, says Sri Sri Ravi Shankar after convincing Ramdev to break his fast. After being held by pirates for 10 months, the ship with Indian sailors on board will finally reach destination Oman tomorrow. The US dismisses Al-Qaeda's new chief as a pale comparison to Osama, says Zawahiri will be met with the same fate. An actor Imran Khan speaks out against Maharashtra government's decision to raise minimum drinking age to 25. Well, first up uh, this hour, the news that we are just getting at this point. Of course, a lot of confusion prevailed after Ravi Rajapanian committee gave out or came out with its recommendations, with those recommendations being handed to a few schools, not directly to the parents. So with that confusion in mind, finally, the, uh, the fee recommendations, the revised fee structure has been posted, has been published on the, web, uh, on the website. The website, of course, uh, can be accessed at the IP address of palikalvi.in. That's the one address that will give you access to all the details that parents might need about the revised fee structure. Well, moving ahead, the first meeting of the nine-member expert panel to review textbooks met today under Chief Secretary Debranath Sarangi. Chief Minister Jayalalitha had said that the committee would submit its report to the Madras High Court before July 6th of 2011, as directed by the Supreme Court. Now, as per Supreme Court directions, the state government has appointed nine-member panel to review quality of textbooks. The panel, headed by Chief Secretary, has uh, academicians C. Jayadev of DAV schools and Mrs. Y.G. Parthasarthi of Padma Shashatri schools. Now, meanwhile, G. Bala Subramanian, uh, Vijay Lakshmi Srinivasan are experts representing for the state. Professor P.K. Tripathi and Professor Anil Sethi are from the NCERT. Now, meanwhile, School Education Secretary Sabitha and School Education Director Basundra Devi are the other members. The meeting was a very useful that's all I can say. And very good people are working on it. Uh, do you have a time frame to finish the job? The court has itself made it. Eh? Yeah. 
maybe in that. Yes. 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 We have had the first committee meeting today and the committee will give its views after reviewing the entire textbooks which are given to them. And uh, since the matter is sub judice, we don't want to say anything. What about the next meeting? We we'll let you know. Right, so that's uh, some of those interesting comments coming in from the uh, members of that expert panel. And of course, uh, joining us to dwell on this big question tonight is uh, Mrs. Sheila Prakash, uh, the principal of Joshua Matriculation School. Also joining me is uh, Jayashri, the student of Irwin Matric uh, HSS, and also Meera, the deputy city editor of The Hindu. Now, Meera, let me come across to you at the first uh, question. Of course, uh, even as we speak, Ramados has uh, made some charges. He says that he's not quite happy with the composition of the expert panel. He's uh, pointing fingers at uh, Mr. Jaydev and, of course, uh, YGP. Uh, how are you reading these uh, allegations and charges being made by the PMK chief? Uh, well, I uh, hear that there are also some uh, unhappy members of the Democratic Youth Federation of India, DIFI, who have also pointed to some management members being part of the panel rather than educationists. From what I know, I believe that uh, Mrs. Vaiji Parthasarthi, for one, has teaching experience. I'm not aware of Mr. Jaydev's experience in active teaching. But if they are pointing to, uh, you know, academic expertise as being crucial to taking a decision on the syllabus, I think there is a valid point in saying that we'd rather have academics and experienced teachers who perhaps are in a better position to comment on the syllabus. Right, so interesting observations being made there by Meera. Uh, let me ask you this question here. Are you happy with the composition? Of course, the one point that was raised first is that why have managers and bureaucrats in one issue that is uh, that solely concerns uh, academicians and educationists? Uh, do you agree with these charges here? You're, uh, see, I don't agree this. Of course, education should have its own ideas and education department should work and act function according to their own ideas here as you asked no i don't think i'm not at all happy with that right uh, just for some clarity you're not happy with the fact that of the inclusions or with the fact that uh, they have not been included the ha facts facts have not been included right uh, let's move ahead now uh, so we are getting the composition out of the way here let's talk about the focus of uh, the expert committee now from what we understand is that perhaps uh, uh, not everyone has been happy with the state board. Not everyone was happy with Samachir Kalvi. Now, to take it a step forward, which are the areas that perhaps the expert committee, according to you, should be focusing on? Mainly on contents, because the content level is very less. See, the, usually children, matriculation children, they say that the Samachir syllabus is very less and they'll finish it within, a, within two months. Whereas the rest of the eight months, what they are going to do, do with the Samachir book. Mm -hmm. See, whereas they used to read 20 lessons, whereas here they are going to read just two, three lessons. So, there is a difference, a far a long difference between uh, Samachir and the matriculation syllabus. So, so if they, no, no, I am not against Samachir syllabus. Let it be Samachir syllabus, but the content should be balanced way. It should be progressed, I mean, it should be designed in a balanced way. And so, balancing and content are perhaps uh, two areas that uh, need to be looked at according to Mrs. Uh, Sheila. Meera, let me get your take on this. Uh, uh, the expert committee has been formed. They have, again will be working with a very, very tight schedule here. By July 6th, they have to come out with some recommendations. Ideally, what would you have uh, the, the expert committee focus on? I think uh, they have to look at core subjects to start with say mathematics and science and uh, then come to the languages as well and see if it's age appropriate to start with. I mean the content has to be age appropriate and then whether it challenges students enough, whether there is enough scope to apply their mind because the claim to formulating the syllabus itself is that it draws upon the NCF 2005 which emphasizes the need for children to apply what they learn and if this syllabus succeeds in doing that I think it's good enough. What about uh, this uh, interesting allegation that's not really allegation but uh, interesting observation that's made time and time again is that uh, we should move away from rote learning. Is that, should that be one focus area, perhaps uh, a move to a model that uh, perhaps the CBSE follows? Is that one uh, recommendation that you would like to make? Definitely, because a lot of times what happens is you find this trend around uh, public examinations in particular 
that if a specific question that's lifted from the textbook has even a different uh, value, say four instead of six, we have parents, anxious parents calling in to say the paper was out of syllabus. So that shouldn't be the case. If the fundamentals are strong, if the emphasis is on concept learning, then children will be in a position to apply that concept to any question and perhaps try attempting unfamiliar questions also. Right, so again, uh, focus on the analytical capabilities, the logical uh, capabilities of uh, nurturing those capabilities. Now, Meera, uh, just one more question at this point will, of course, be the fact that uh, uh, interesting observation uh, was made by Mrs. Sheila here that she has nothing against uh, Samachir Kalvi. Let me ask you this question as well. Uh, Samachir Kalvi, can it be discarded completely? Meera, if you can uh, hear me, uh, one question that I wanted to ask you was whether Samachir Kalvi yes. can be phased out completely. Huh. Well, uh, I think it's a very useful exercise to merge the streams because the idea is to bridge the disparity. And if the syllabus is res uh, evaluated responsibly and uh, valid introductions are made and justified omissions are made, I think it makes for a very good syllabus that Tamil Nadu deserves. So I think uh, the exercise is worthwhile anyway. It's so interesting that so we can perhaps uh, watch out for a hybrid here. But of course, uh, the direct outcome of this exercise has been the fact that uh, for the next three weeks, uh, the students will be without textbooks. So that brings us to the next questions. What do students study without any textbooks? Let's get a student's perspective on this one who uh, actually faces uh, these uh, troubles every day. Let's go across to Jayashri who's joining us uh, in our studios. Jayashri, every day you go to school there and in a break from tradition, here we have uh, studies without any books. So tell us, uh, from the first period when studies begin, uh, how do the teachers go about it? As a student, how are you made to learn? How are you made to progress without any textbooks here? We just study basic concepts and uh, it is already we already studied it. It is just beating about the bush, always reading the same stuff. And so essentially what you're saying is that there's little progress because the teachers end up uh, beating on the same concept. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's what I say. We are studying the same thing. And uh, it's no, it's even boring even. If you're studying in the summer class, uh, we would have finished half of the portions and it would be easy for the revision. But now we are rushing about the portions, we will not be having time for the revision. It may even, uh, it may even decrease our marks. Right, so time is a big constraint here. Let me ask you this, uh, Mrs. Sheila here, you as a, both as a parent and a principal, I think these are concerns that you'd be facing not only on a professional front, but also on a personal front about the time factor here with the, so much of time being taken, three weeks it'll take for perhaps uh, to develop some consensus and then more time for printing of textbooks. So again, time is one variable that we really cannot play with, but unfortunately in this case, we have to take cognizance of that. So how are you as both as a parent and uh, as a principal looking yeah. at this time factor? We are much worried on this aspect because we are really wasting our time. Even children, they had a kind of eagerness when they opened the school. But after coming to school, they came to know that there is no books, there is no lessons, there is no teaching. So now, slowly we feel that from students part, they are losing interest. And they are like us. Now, day to day, they are thinking school is a picnic place. Like, uh, the seriousness has come down. So, so seriousness has come down. That's one interesting observation that you've made. That's the first reaction that most of us thought that with activity-based learning, it's a, it's an excuse for playtime. Is that true, Jayashree? Uh, uh, that school days are a lot more relaxed nowadays. It's almost uh, day three now. That uh, there's little uh, to to read about. There's little to learn about. It's more of uh, play work at uh, school. Is that true? Yes, it is. Uh, we are come. We are so relaxed, and we are not even concentrating in the basic concepts. You're just thinking that we already know these concepts. Why should we listen the class? You're just coming and going. That's it. Not much interest in the school. Right, uh, Meera. If you can hear me, if you're still with us, uh, let me get your reaction on this. Of course, activity-based learning was seen as one alternative, uh, as a stopgap arrangement. Is that uh, number one? Uh, how much of a, a factor is that when it uh, when we talk about the time it's going to take? And number two, is it are we really wasting the students' time here when uh, they are made to do? Uh, activity-based learning and there is no real text to guide them. Well, uh, activity-based learning itself was introduced five years ago for primary sections. What the government has done now is given a bridge course kind of syllabus to cover in this one month. So I'm not sure about wasting time because most of these schools that claim that time is lost have already started the class 10 portions way back in 9th standard after December. So I'm not sure how much time is lost and it's 
this, the time can definitely be utilized to have some uh, science lab sessions and uh, I don't think one month is very crucial but in today's competitive world schools would see one month as being a very crucial uh, time frame for covering portions. Perhaps they will compensate by working Saturdays and unofficially Sundays also, we don't know. Right, competitive indeed, especially with uh, some colleges in DU coming out with cutoffs uh, as high as 100 percent. Well, that's all we have time for. Meera, thanks a lot for joining us, uh, taking your time out for us and adding perspective. And same, okay. Mrs. Sheila, it was lovely having you here uh, to share your perspective, both as a professional and, of course, as a mother. And finally, Jayashree, thanks for giving us the insight on what you go through on a daily basis at school. Thanks a lot, all of us. Uh, now, moving ahead, uh, on to more news from the city. Today, a massive fire in Tondiar Pet burnt the slums in the area to ashes. Now, the, first, uh, the fire destroyed all the residents' possessions and it was uh, not the first time that such a tragedy has happened. Locals have cried out that the fires have struck their homes on several previous occasions, but successive governments have only made empty promises offering stable residences. Now, for one girl, however, the tragedy is particularly great. Saraswati had just finished class 12 and was preparing to apply to college when the fire struck. Now, the fire destroyed her mark sheets, certificates, application form and with it, all the money that her parents had saved up for her higher education. Now, her only hope is that some form of support might pour in from the government. Madras University. I was able to submit a Monday and I was able to submit a Monday. I was able to submit a Monday and I was able to submit a Monday. I was able to submit a certificate and mark sheet. I was able to help and I was able to submit a Monday. I was able to submit a Monday. I was able to submit a Monday and I was able to submit a Monday. I was able to submit a Monday and I was able to submit a Monday. I was able to help and I was able to help. Well, according to a recent survey, India is the fourth most, fourth most unsafe place on the planet for women. Does Chennai fare any better? We tell you on the other side.